Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, I'm super excited to welcome everyone for our second masterclass of Creative for Our Future. Cohorts, as you all know, um, there are many virtual events awaiting for you um, through the program where you're asked to film yourself or create visual assets. Um, thank you for those who have been providing those. But not only for a program, um, you know, it's super critical in this world to know how to create impactful assets without looking, you know, too amateurish. Um, on this note, I'm excited to welcome master teacher today, Sharky Weinberg, um, video director. So Sharky has been a senior video director for Convex um, Creative Studio based in Brooklyn. It's a super, super uh, cool film agency. So I highly recommend that you check it out. Um, so he specializes in commercial and documentary video production and has worked with organizations such as Intel, Disney, Korean Model, CB2, UNICEF, Bacardi, and Macintosh. But um, I guess you're better to talk about your, you know, what sort of proje uh, projects you have been working on. So we're truly too happy to welcome you, Sharky um, and Convix team. Um, I guess we can get started. Um, but Sharky, would you want to say something before we start? Um, well, I just want to say thank you, thank you all for joining me today. Um, I've looked a little bit because um, I was given each of your uh, kind of some of your materials and all of your work is so beautiful and wonderful and you should all be so very proud. Um, so uh, I think uh, you guys are really inspiring. And so I'm, I'm really excited to, to give you guys this little talk, um, which will be, uh, you know, hopefully not too boring. And if I'm too boring, just let me know and I'll try to be a little bit more exciting. Um, and if you need to me to repeat anything or want me to go back, just let me know. Um, but uh, we, it seems like we're from all over the world today. Is that, is that true? Yes. So we have um, Osa Simwen from Nigeria, Ben Benjamin from US, Sejo from India, Camila from Ecuador, um, who else? Anieska from Poland. Shuzo, he's Japanese, but based in Vienna right now, I guess. Um, and Yara, she's uh, Barcelona or Egypt, are you? Uh, based in right I'm now. I'm in Barcelona now. Okay, great. Yeah, so we have whole United Nations kids, creative kids here. Awesome. Wow. Well, I'm here in Brooklyn um, at, a, at a co-working spot. Um, so... I just want to start just to gauge a little bit. Um, do we have any filmmakers or photographers or, or, or people with any kind of uh, filmmaking experience amongst us? You do. Beautiful. Great. Um, so I think something important to keep in mind as we talk about filming ourselves is that uh, it's a bit different, right, than, than in filming, you know, an, another subject, you know, it's a lot more subjective, right? You, you're worrying not, you know, when you're filming someone else, you can just tell them what to do and they'll probably do it um, or they won't, but it's a little bit, you can get in your head quite easily when you're filming yourself. So that's probably the biggest thing kind of to get over, um, which is probably also the most difficult thing to get over. Um, but at the same time, you know, all of the, all of the fundamentals are, are, are the same. Um, and so, yeah, so I, we have this little presentation for you, um, uh, just in terms of the best practices, what, what I think are the best practices, um, in terms of filming himself. And it's something that we've been kind of honing for the last year, because unfortunately, um, you know, we've been in such a, 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 you know, a divided world because of this pandemic. We've had to do this with a lot of people and a lot of people have had to get good at this um, because it seems to, you know, we have to um, communicate this way. But I, I do want to reiterate what Mika said is that um, I think uh, the change is relatively permanent. Um, 
in a lot of ways. I think this way of content creation, of, of, uh, of self-documentation um, is going to continue. Um, so I think it's really important to be comfortable with it and really important to um, develop your own kind of uh, visual vocabulary um, when you're trying to, to express yourself because this is gonna be a tool in which you tell your story, right? In which you are going to, to be able to, you know, express to another person uh, what you're about, what you do, what you believe in. And so it's important to have an understanding of kind of the, the form of that, that, you know, you, that it's always important to, to have your, your, uh, the wrapper, so to speak, the thing that you're presenting, um, this information about yourself, that wrapper should be reflective of you as a person, as a, as a creative, right? There should be a connection there. Right. The things that you're presenting, uh, the content is just as important as the way you're presenting that content. Does that make sense? Yeah. So um, with that being said, um, I just urge you to always take a second when you are moving forward and making these things um, to be like, OK, am I presenting in this way? This. Am I presenting myself in a way? that is reflective of the work that I do. Um, because if it is, it not only will impress the audience, right? But um, it will help the audience that much more understanding you as a human being and you as a creative. Um, so yeah, um, I think we can begin though with the nitty gritty. The, uh, a lot of it's gonna be quite, it's none of this is, I just wanna also <laughs> say, now this is hard. You guys all have phones, you all know how to do this. It's, uh, it, this isn't rocket science. Um, and you're all, you know, you all have wonderful taste and, and, and kind of an understanding of, of space and form. And this isn't gonna be, you know, I'm, I'm not talking to a, an audience right now that, that has no idea what they're doing. I think you guys are gonna be great at this. So, um, so Lisa, Lisa is our producer and she is in the background here, um, going to press the slides forward. So let's start. So there, these are the, the, the five, uh, let's say, sorry, the seven things that we're going to kind of cover, which is getting started, which is really more of the technical aspect of it. Framing, location, lighting, delivery, slash the content itself, and um, covering something called B-roll, which some of you will know and some of you don't probably know, and I'll, I'll explain. And then lastly, just some um, equipment, if you guys want to to kind of up the self self documentation game a bit, and some some suggestions for for equipment you guys can get to help that. So let's uh, let's just get started, right? Getting started. Okay. So when you're doing this, um, my first suggestion, though, and I know we're calling it self documenting. My first suggestion is to get a buddy, you know, get a friend to help you out for an hour because um, it's really distracting to look at yourself. You know, if, well, there are a few reasons. Um, you know what, sorry, I'm gonna back it up. Before you start anything, um, you should go on your phone and figure out the best quality that your phone has. Um, I'm guessing we all have smartphones, right? Um, I can speak to iPhone. I don't really know how it works on Android. Unfortunately, I, I do apologize, but I think um, it's as easy as going on Google and typing in, you know, the type of phone you have and best video, you know, highest quality video specs, right? And so for the iPhone, for example, um, I would make sure that you are using at 4K at 24 um, uh, frames per second. And 24 frames per second, uh, what that means is, is, you know, the most, 24 frames per second is how many images um, a camera is taking per second to create a video. Because a video is really just a string of still images, right? 
Um, so, excuse me. Um, it's just a string of, of, uh, of, of still images. Um, and 24 frames is the closest to the way we process um, images in our brain. Um, some countries do prefer to use 30. I think in Europe, um, a lot of content is done at 30 frames per second. Um, so you just, you'll have to gauge that with who you're presenting to in the future. For this though, for this presentation, um, which we'll get to at the end here, what exactly you're going to be doing, but um, I will ask you guys to all submit at 24 frames per second. So it's all the same. Um, and uh, if you have an iPhone, there are two settings and one is high efficiency and the other is, gotta look it up. I'm so sorry, I forgot it. Um, let me see. Uh -huh. Man, where is it? Okay, well, anyway, there are two options in terms of quality. One is high efficiency and the other is, is most compatible or something like that. Um, I would, do not use high efficiency. It will degrade the image, use the other one. Um, and again, those with Androids or other brands of phone, uh, just go on Google. It will be really easy to figure out um, the highest quality stuff. So as I was saying before though, I would love you guys to get a friend for an hour to help you, um, help record you, because most cameras have two phones, right? You got this one in the, in the back, and then you got the one on the screen right here. Um, this one is much, much better. So when you can record yourself using this, use this one, use these, use these lenses because they are much better lenses generally. And, um, and when you're recording yourself, right, you see in the image right here on the bottom, bottom left, and you can kind of see there these two, this, this guy, right, is, is, is either looking at the phone or he's looking at the camera. And you're going to want to always look at the camera. And when you're filming yourself though, from this camera, and you see yourself in the, the image, you're gonna, you're gonna tend to look at your own face. It's what I do, it's what everyone seems to do. It's really distracting. And also, unless you're looking at the camera, right? You see right now how I'm, you know, I'm looking straight at my, my computer camera. It, it's a lot more engaging, right? It, it's as if you're looking the person that you're addressing in the eye. And so you wanna keep that. So um, my suggestion is to get someone to record you, again, from this camera. Um, and that you make sure when you're presenting, right, that you're always looking at the lens. You're not looking to the left or the right. You're not looking at the phone. And if you do need to record yourself, you're not looking at yourself. Um, so that, 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 that's what I would suggest. Um, and it's just kind of, yeah, again, it's just so distracting to look at yourself. And lastly here, um, filters and, and things like that are fun for Snapchat and Instagram, but that's not what we're doing. Um, so no filters, no effects, just keep it simple. Um, you're all beautiful the way you are. So um, let's, but yeah, just keep it naturalistic. All right, framing, really, really easy here. Just for our purposes, we're gonna keep you in the center, right? Um, we want you center of the frame. Now, Another big thing is, to, if you look at the second image here on the top right, there's always, you know, there are two ways you can film. You can film um, horizontally, or you can film, uh, I'm sorry, you can, you can film vertically, or you can film horizontally, or landscape, some people call. Um, do not shoot vertically, right? That is, vertically is fine if you're doing like Facebook Live or, you know, Instagram or, or vlogging or, or, or whatever. Um, but for this, for our purposes, because we're creating a, a little film of you guys, um, we wanna keep it at something called a 16 by nine um, aspect ratio, which is kind of that. And in, in order to do that, you have to use, um, you have to point the camera like this. 
um, in, a, in, a, in a horizontal way. Um, and a, an easy way to remember that is, you know, if it looks like a movie or a TV show, right? If it's the same shape you see on Netflix or you see on Hulu or you see on Amazon or you see at the movie theater, you're in good shape. If it's long ways, you're, don't do that. Um, and okay, so one thing that's helpful, and I know the iPhone uh, does, has the ability to do this, and I'm guessing Android and, um, and Pixel or whatever everyone has, um, has too, is you, you, can, you can see these, uh, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? It's, it's those lines, right? Um, uh, so you, you, I would use these lines. So you see how you have the two lines going horiz uh, horizontally and you have two going vertically. Try to place your body um, right where all four of them connect, right? And this is, you know, these, these four lines, right? You know, these four points on that, that, um, that meter um, has something to do with called the rule of thirds, which we're not gonna get into today. Um, if you have any, it's a bit more advanced filmmaking, but quickly though, that those four points are, are, uh, are really important when you make any video, um, when those, those, where those four lines intersect. Um, and when you have a subject, right? Um, any subject, uh, it, whether it be yourself or someone else, you know, you should be using those four points um, because those are focal points for your eyes on screen. Um, but again, that's, don't worry too much about that. Just, it's a really good, um, it's a really good, those markers are a really good tool to help you examine yourself. Um, and, you know, if you were, if you were doing something a little bit higher production, you would put yourself maybe a little to the left, a little to the right, but with iPhones or any, or any phone, any phone production, um, I, I do suggest uh, staying in the center, um, at least for this project, because you're, especially because you're addressing someone, right? If you were addressing someone off screen, if someone was interviewing you, um, then it would be a little different, but because these presentations that you're going to be giving at the UN General Assembly, you're addressing people, keep yourself centered and keep yourself looking at the camera. Um, one thing that's probably pretty obvious, but I really can't stress it enough. Um, keep the camera still, don't move around with it. Don't have the person, you know, going like this. Um, there's a time and place for experimental framing. This is probably not it. Um, so, you know, when you're moving around or shaking, it kind of feels like you're on a, in, in an earthquake. So really try to avoid that. So whoever is filming you, um, if they need to be holding it, um, make sure that their, you know, their elbows are on the table and they're really trying not to move. Um, but if you can, um, prop it on up some books, make sure that it's, it's staying still. Um, and that ideally, especially when you are um, addressing and, and, and talking about yourselves and what you're doing. Um, keeping it still is the most important thing because the most distracting thing that you can do, even more, di more distracting than, you know, looking at yourself or not looking at the, the camera is, is if, if the, the frame is, is chattering, if it's moving a lot. And the last thing is um, it's something about headroom. Headroom is you see this space right now between my head and the top of this frame, right? You don't want too much, you know, you don't want to do this and you don't want to cut off the top of your head. You want to be right about here. Does that make sense? I think you guys all have really good eyes, so you, you'll, you'll know it's right. But um, right about here, um, I would say, it's, you can't really describe it in inches, uh, but you know, that, that should work. And you're really framing kind of from the top of your chest to a little past the top of your head. 
That all makes sense? Cool. All right, Lisa. Location. This one's very easy. And it's a little bit, this is my opinion, right? So this, these are my personal um, preferences. So if you think otherwise, especially between option one and option two, you know, feel free to do what you think is right. But in general, um, I think having depth behind you is, is super important. It's actually why I chose to sit here uh, because you can see there's a lot of room. There's all this space behind me. You know, ideally you wouldn't have people walking back and forth like I do because I'm in an office, but um, having space behind you and making sure that it's not too distracting, right? You're not having really distracting art. You know, you don't have really that. I mean, if you're going to shoot yourself in your home or your apartment, I know this goes without saying, but clean up before. No one wants to see a dirty apartment. Um, no one wants to see dirty laundry. That's a big one that I see all the time. Dirty laundry is a no, dirty tables. Just don't do that. Just clean up before, it's really easy. Um, uh, so just make sure it's not distracting, right? Um, I like simple geometric patterns behind you. You know, a bookshelf is great. Um, or some furniture, just like it's simple. It's not distracting and it helps to tell the story. Now, the one thing that I really don't suggest that I am doing right now is if you see this line, it's direct, it looks like there is a black bar coming out of the top of my head. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm a being a bad teacher right now, but this is just the way this room works. Um, it's like the window frames. I, I personally hate when there's something coming out of the top of someone's head. I think it's just so distracting. So truly try to avoid this. So I'm, I am right now the example of what not to do because I look like I have a horn on the top of my head. So don't do that. Um, the other thing I would, if you can not do, you know, is uh, just put yourself, don't, I, I wouldn't put yourself in front of just like a plain wall. I think that actually ends up looking quite, it's not that it's not clean and it's not that it's, it's definitely not distracting. It's just very blah. Right? It's, it doesn't say anything about you. It's, it's very sterile. It's very clinical. And I would suggest um, not doing that. Again, if that's what you're more comfortable with, then you know, by all means. But I really do think it helps tell your story when, you know, and, and, and this is, again, more of an opinion, but when the viewer can kind of see a little bit of your world, right? I think that's helpful. I think it gives, it gives the person watching you, listening to you, you know, a little bit more insight into who you are, right? Because um, again, that's what this is all about, right? You're trying to show yourself, you're trying to be authentic and open and, and, um, and vulnerable on the camera, which is really hard. And so, so there are lots of little tools you can use that have nothing to do with how you deliver the content. And one of those I think is, is, is showing you in a place that it's reflective of who you are and what you're about and where you're from. Um, so, but again, there is a fine line that it's not distracting, right? You know, again, you're the star of the show, not the background. Um, and lastly, and this is the most important one, is do not film in front of a mirror. Do not, because all of these cameras, right? Um, they all adjust lighting. Uh, they also adjust the exposure, which is how much light they let onto the sensor of the camera to the brightest point in the frame. So if your window, right? So if you're in front of a window, it's going to adjust to the window so it's not blown out, right? And if it's adjusting to the window, then it's going your face, which is much darker, is going to be a silhouette and you're not gonna be able to see anything. So. If you guys send me something in front of a window, I'm gonna send it back um, and you'll have to do it again because it's, it's pretty much useless. It's my biggest, my biggest, I would say if there was one thing you took away from today, it would be that. Um, all right, Lisa, next one, lighting. But windows are great for another thing, right? They're really good sources of light. In fact, they're the best source of light. It is soft. 
It is natural, makes everyone look good. So if you can use the window as your source of light, um, I really suggest you do that. Now, I don't wanna get too granular into where light should be, but if you have an option, right, a light isn't, it's not the best when it's right in front of you, you know? If you can have the option of putting it a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, or what that will do is that one side of your face will be a little bit brighter, the other side of your face will be a little bit darker. And as a result, you will add a little depth and it'll add a little contrast, which is always really, it makes the image look better. Now, if the only option is to have something in front of you like this, you know, right here, kind of blasting forwardly at your face, that is better than having no light. So if you can add a little bit of an angle to where the light source is coming from, great. But if you can't, um, having it right in front of you also really works. The other thing is you don't want to like a really bright light blasting at you, right? It will blow out your face. You'll look really weird. Um, it should be a soft, natural-esque light. Um, that's why I really suggest using windows. Um, well, depending, I mean, if the sun is coming right through the window and onto your face, it might have the that effect. But if you have a blind, right, if you have curtains, you could put in front of that to kind of uh, diffuse that light a bit. Um, then we'll get this really nice soft glow. Um, and that will that will work. You know, a good I'm looking through you guys right now. I'm seeing if there are any good examples of you all. And you didn't know you're going to be tested. And uh, Camilla, you your lighting is really nice because you have a source kind of coming from a little bit of an angle, right? Yeah. You have one side of your face that's slightly darker and there's a little bit of contrast. It's nice and soft. It's natural. Your background is great. It, you know, I would maybe ask for a little bit more depth than that, but that's, you know, what you have works. It's not distracting, but it shows who you are. Um, so good work. Um, and, but I think the biggest thing to take away from Camilla here is that her, her lighting is really quite nice. If you can't use natural light though, um, again, use a lamp, um, use some sort of light source. Again, make sure it's not just blasting at you and losing all the aspects of your face. Um, you know, something, and I'll talk about it a little bit, but you know, a good tool to help that is something called a ring light. Um, which is you can buy them. You know, most of you guys are not in the United States, so I don't know. Is, is Amazon in Europe? How do you feel? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Sorry, that was a really stupid question. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, any kind of electronic store, you can buy them for very cheaply. A little something called a ring light, and it it does. You know, just the shape of the the light source itself is quite helpful. Um, because it gives you kind of that nice glow. Um, so, and you can see in that, sorry, can you go back, Lisa? Lisa, can you go back, please? Thank you. You can see that that guy on the right, the really dorky looking guy right there, um, that guy has a, has a ring light. So, all right, next slide. So this is the um, this is probably the most difficult thing because the other things you can replicate. It's all technical. You can look at these slides; they can help you because um, I think you all have a copy of this, and um, or you can look online. You know, it's all it's all there. I'm not coming up with anything new. Um, but this is 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 the toughest um, aspect, which is 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 uh, presenting. You know, um, and this is really your opportunity to um, be vulnerable, to show who you are. Um, and there's a lot of things, you know, my background actually is theater. Um, I was, I was, a, I, went, I went to school for theater direction and I essentially spent four years really working on one idea, right? One aspect of that, which was, was being, truthful, right? Being authentic, um, right? And so that, that is what 
people want, right? People want to see you. You are the most interesting thing you could possibly be. Does that make sense, right? Trying to be something else or someone else or whatever is not interesting. People lose it, people don't tune in and people don't, uh, don't, don't care, you know? But if you show yourself, right? If you show you as a person, I mean, it, is, it, is, it is, will always be gorgeous. It will always be beautiful. Um, so when you're speaking, because all of you, and this will be easy, it should come quite easily for all of you because you know, you're talking about your passions, you're talking about what you do. You know, this, this, um, this honesty, this place of honesty is already built in, you know, built there, right? So if you're speaking honestly, you know, if you're talking about what you love, it's going to come out as an honest and beautiful. And so, um, but it's hard. It's like one of those things where you, you can't think about it too much, but you do have to be aware of it. Um, and I know that's, uh, that's not the best advice um, because there's no, there's no like trick. There's no like tricks you can do to it. I mean, there are, there are like acting tricks, but I don't think they're particularly useful in this setting. Um, and so, and you're not, and I also want to stress, you're not acting. This is acting is very different. Um, what you're doing is being yourself, which in a lot of ways is much harder um, being yourself in front of a camera. So as I said, the rule of thumb, if you're not being yourself, if you're not being genuine, uh, you're going to come off as disingenuine and you're going to lose your audience and you're going to lose your opportunity to tell not only your story, but to tell people about what you do and to get people excited about what you do. I mean, that's part of this, right? This is to get people excited about your practice and how you are personally, you know, you all are looking at your practices in a way that are um, ingenious in their own right, right? They are evocative, they're groundbreaking, and, and you're really trying to, to use your, um, your practice, your art, your design, your whatever you do, um, you know, you're trying to use that as a tool to create a better future, right? Or to create, to be aware that um, the world needs to change, it needs to change for the better, and that through creation and through creative thought, uh, you can get there. Right? It is a tool that we as humanity can use. And so this is your opportunity to show how you're gonna do it. Um, so again, I, 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 um, I ask you, because what you're doing is vitally important. And remember that it's in fact, it's dire, right? We need this right now. And so um, speak that truth, you know, show how you're gonna make it better. And if you speak to it honestly and with love, you'll get there. Um, so I hope that wasn't too like heady or, or uh, you know, a little bit too philosophical, but um, what you have to say matters and we all wanna see you when you say it because you're all so interesting and so awesome. Um, one thing, just a tech, one technical note I will make is that um, I wouldn't suggest any memorization. Now, some people do really well with that. I am not one of those people. A lot of times I think memorization can sound red, can sound in disingenuine. Um, so I think um, if I were you guys, I would, I would write a list of kind of the order of which you wanna say things and what you wanna say kind of as an outline, but nothing super concrete. So I would let it kind of flow organically, but I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't write out a script for yourself because the soon as, as soon as you start having, uh, as soon as your mental energy is gonna to go towards memorization, we're gonna lose you. We're gonna lose, and it's gonna sound red, and it's gonna sound, um, we're gonna lose that truth. And we, we don't wanna lose that. Um, and whether it's this or moving forward or any way, if you ever, any sort of self-recording, if you can master this aspect, this, you know, the presentation of oneself, you know, all the other shit that I said, you know, whether it's, you know, how, how you frame yourself or what camera you use or what angle, like it doesn't, in the end, it really won't matter um, at that much if you are 
if you're up there and, 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 and being authentic, right? And then vice versa, right? If you've got all those other things perfectly and you're just kind of, you know, you're not being, if you're not telling your truth, then the other things won't matter either. So, um, but again, I, I would suggest that, I wouldn't say going into this blind, definitely spend some time, write an outline, say what you wanna say, figure out the order in which you wanna say it and the major points you're trying to make, right? Cause you don't wanna ramble. You wanna to get to the point you wanna, you know, you have something to say, you have, um, you have a message. Um, so you wanna to get to that and you wanna be organized. But again, it is that balancing act of being underprepared and overprepared. And there is a sweet spot and you'll know what it feels like because it feels like it's just kind of flowing. It's good. Um, great, let's go to the next one. All right, so this is my suggested structure of how you should, of the, of the presentation, right? So you guys will be each doing two minute presentations um, from what I've been told about who you are um, and, and kind of what you're about. And um, so this is, and I'm gonna just kind of read this list for you guys, but this is my, my suggested, um, my suggested uh, outline of how I, I would structure the presentation. So start with who you are, your introduction. I mean, obviously start with who you are, where you are and what you do, what your practice consists of, how long you've been doing it and why you're passionate about it. Okay, start there. Um, and then kind of go into the, the, um, this program, right? So, you know, talking about what steps you took to develop your practice and steps you, you took to bring your ideas into reality, right? This is like, essentially, this is the point in which you are going to be talking about how you've used your grant, um, right? What you made, what you got better at. Um, what, what, you know, what project you're working on. This is this, um, walk us through what that was, what it's been like to have these funds to help that help support you, um, and help develop your practice. Um, and lastly, and this is probably the most important part is talking about what you took away from the experience. You as a creative, how you grew, what you learned, how did you get better? How did you open up your own, open up questions? What questions do you have now? Um, you guys will all be paired with mentors too, correct? Um, so I think, you know, any, any insights you got from that experience will also be really good there. Um, you know, how those mentors were, were um, helpful and, and, and helped you um, in, your, in your practice. Um, and then lastly, like why you think, and this is important, is why you think programs like this are important, why you think this program is important, right? Why is it important to support young creatives for a better future, right? For a more sustainable future. What, what is, you know, why do we need to continue this? You know, why the Swarovski Foundation was, was smart to do it um, and so on. And that right there, you know, that's a really good beginning, middle and end. Little blurb about what you've done. And, and that's really just always remember that when you're, you're doing any sort of self-taping or really, in my opinion, any art form, any design at all, does consist in some way of a beginning, a middle and an end, right? Does consist of a story. You know, whether we're talking about graphic design or filmmaking or pottery or industrial design, you know, people, you know, you're not, when you're looking at any of these things, you are looking at the thing itself, um, but there's so much more in the ethereal layer behind it, um, which is the story. Uh, so always keep that in mind moving forward, I think, with anything you do is what is the beginning, what is the middle and what is the end? Um, because if you don't really have that in your mind, I think, uh, and I think a lot of other creatives would, and rightfully so, maybe think that's a little too linear to think. And in some situations that's right. Um, but you do, should always have a little idea of it. And especially um, when you are self-recording and, and, and doing things like this, when you're telling your story, because people need to be able to follow it. All right, Lisa, next slide, B-roll. 
B-roll. I'll go through this really quickly. Um, does anyone know what B-roll is? If you do, raise your hand. If you don't, that's fine. Great. B-roll is just the other stuff that's not you talking at the camera, right? Um, B-roll is the additional footage that we'd love you guys to submit. Uh, because what we're going to be doing on our end um, is we'll be making a little film that like wraps up this whole experience. Um, and also these could be, if you want, um, if you have any editing experience, you can utilize this in your presentation. So, um, so there are three types of B-roll that I want to talk about. Are these on this slide? Can you go to the next slide, Lisa? Yes. All right. We're going to go to this slide and we're going to go back. But there are four types of B-roll that are important, in my opinion. You got action B-roll, right? That's you doing your thing. You making stuff. Um, you um, at the computer doing graphic design, right? Um, it's, it's, it is shots of what you do and you doing it. Um, and this is an opportunity, I would suggest getting three types for each, right? You get, there are three types of shots. You got a wide, wide angle shot, you got a medium shot and you got a close up and they are all exactly how uh, they sound, right? So a wide angle is a wide shot, you know? You know, if you are, I know we have someone that does shoes in this group, right? It, it would be a shot of you and your whole studio. If you have a studio, uh, you're making a shoe and you're seeing the whole space around you. And then the next shot um, would be a little bit closer, right? Very similar in terms of um, the framing we have for our self-recording, right? It would be a medium shot is generally, you know, from uh, chest up or waist up. Um, but in this situation, it would be uh, you guys in action doing something and then close-ups, which is, you know, close-up shots, uh, you know, where you see um, in detail uh, what you're doing. So of your hands working or um, of equipment that you're using. You know, those are the three medium, wide, a wide, medium and close-up. I would stick to that. And also find interesting angles, right? If the light looks cool, you know, and I'm sorry, I'm using the shoe example, but it's a good example. The light, you know, looks really cool coming off the shoe from this angle. Get that, you know, be creative here. You're, you're, you, this is the opportunity you get to be a little bit more expressive um, visually with what you're doing, right? Then the other one is final product B-roll. I know this won't necessarily apply to everyone here, um, but it, you, you can, there are ways to apply it. It's just shots, kind of some good shots of the final product of whatever you are making or doing, right? Or, or just some, you know, it's almost like creating a small uh, video portfolio of some of your stuff. That will be helpful. Um, atmospheric B-roll is not necessarily you um, working, but it's kind of your environment, right? Where you live, if it wanna be your street, or the city that you're living in, or shots of your studio. Um, people, you know, shots of you guys doing things that aren't necessarily your practice, but help your practice. You know, meditation or jogging or whatever, like, is on the periphery of the world that you, you know, your creative world, right? All the other things that feed into that creation, um, that's atmospheric people whether that's location, whether that's action, or whether that is, um, you know, people, right? All of those things are part of that story, are part of that creation. And then the last thing is um, if you have any kind of archival stuff, any stuff from your past, you know, how you got into, you know, a shot of you, you're really, again, using the shoe example, you know, making your first shoe or whatever, designing your first shoe. So anything from the past. Uh, Lisa, can you go to the previous slide, please? Um, I wanna, again, stress that this is an example, this is the moment where you get to be more creative. Um, you know, 
you can actually, this is where you can add a lot of motion, right? If you want to push into something, right? Start from far back and move in, you can. Um, if you want to get something weird angle, if you want to shoot something, you know, the, through the reflection of a, of a mirror, right? If you really like something the way it looks in a mirror, right? You shoot the mirror. Um, shooting the way light hits it. All of these things, and you all have beautiful eyes, so you're gonna see beautiful little motion moments. Um, and it's really an opportunity to be creative. And also if your phone has slow motion option, um, B-roll is always great in slow motion. It's always cool. But I don't know if you have that. So if you don't, no worries. If you do, um, I do suggest playing with it um, because it does, especially if you do something that, you know, it's, you know if you were sewing, right? Um, it's kind of hard to see the intricacies of that in real time. But if you were to slow it down, it really brings out the beauty and, and the intricacy of, of, of what you're doing. Um, great, I think we can move on. Next. Um, okay, this is bonus, some equipment. If you wanna buy it, don't feel like you need to, but you know, it does help. Um, one thing's called a lavalier mic, right? So you can plug it into your phone somehow and it will go up clip on here because I, I don't like when people, you know, when they were self-recording, uh, when they're wearing their headphones, I think that's ugly, um, personal opinion. Um, but I would suggest not doing that. Um, and if you can get a mic, um, it will make that sound so much clearer um, and just kind of a little bit more professional sounding, right? Again, these are all optional. Don't feel like you need to go buy out and buy these. So one is a lavalier mic that goes directly into your phone. Again, you can find these things online. The other thing, and maybe the most important one I would suggest is some sort of tripod, something to hold the camera um, that, you know, with your friend, you know, friends can press play uh, or, or sorry, can press record, but they aren't, they don't have to hold it. And, you know, there are ways to make uh, makeshift tripods. You can actually, I've seen people take um, uh, paper cups and like cut a groove into it and then just put the phone in and that will hold it. Um, not quite as precise, but I guess that could work. I've never done that. Um, and, uh, and then lastly, um, getting a ring light, right? Which is a type of light that really helps make your face look really nice. Um, and yeah, and so, you know, I just wanna to say too that like all these techniques, I, I'm actually coming at it, you know, you can approach these things uh, kind of from the content creation side of stuff, like like as a as a vlogger or as, you know as a you know a social media person, which is important. You know, social media is part of the zeitgeist. You know, I totally support artists who who use it as a platform to share themselves. Um, but I, you know, in general, I'm approaching all this from a more uh, from a filmmaking point of view. From you know, because in the end, right, there isn't much difference between this and a hundred fifty thousand dollar camera they do the same thing. They create images and they tell stories. And, and I think the approach should be the same. So my suggestions here have always, are all uh, based in, in filmmaking, because that's really what, it's what I do. Um, whether it's, it's, you know, whether it's big commercials or documentaries, right? So, you know, it's the same, the same tools. You know, once you master this, you could really go out and direct whatever, in my opinion. Um, it just all becomes uh, vocabulary and jargon and some, you know, anyway. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Um, as you guys go about this, you guys are gonna have questions probably. Um, past the questions that you're gonna ask now, and I'm sorry, I've gone a little bit over. I wanted to have more time for Q and A, but as you're going through, um, you have questions or you want me to take a look at something or you're like, hey, does this work? Does this not work? Um, I will, you guys will be sent my contact information. information. Um, so feel free to send me whatever you want, uh, whenever you need to. Um, I will do my best to get back to you as quickly and as uh, less talkatively as I have been today. Um, so I apologize if I've ever rambled. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at that. So um, I'd love to open it up to any questions and also, if there are no questions, um, then it's also all right. But um, if anyone has any questions, I, I feel free to answer them now. 
I do have some questions. Yes, come on. Well, first of all, thank you for opening that space for us send, to send you our videos and stuff like that. Yes. I was wondering, I just wrote down a couple as you were uh, presenting, but I was wondering what would you recommend would be the best time of the day for natural light to film? Really Because good question. Because sometimes it's too harsh. Oh, yes, very good. I, um, interesting. So I think in general, the best time of day for light is in the evening, in my opinion, okay. or very early in the morning. You know, you know, the hour or two after the sun rises. I don't know when you guys get up. You know, we're all creative, so we probably all sleep in a little bit too much. Um, but uh, I would suggest doing it in the evening, you know, um, in the few hours before sundown, when it's still bright out, but it's- Like golden hour-ish? Exactly, yes, golden okay. hour, they call it. Golden hour, um, it's those few hours before sunset. Um, that are just really soft. Now, that becomes a bit of a null point if your source of light is, you know, if the sun is coming down and now it's just pointing at your face, mm -hmm. uh, it does that, you kind of lose the point there. Uh, the quality of light, it, the, the harshness of light is, is m more noticeable than the quality of light. Um, so, Yeah, so, you know, if that's the case, right, um, you know, sometimes in the middle of the day at noon is actually kind of nice, only because it's very even, right? And unless you have a skylight, it's probably not going to be coming directly through a window. Now, if you're next to like a white building, right, and it's bouncing off the white building into your window, that could be an issue. Um, but um, in the middle of the day can also work. Um, but I would, if you can, do it in the evening. That's when I would do it. Thank you. I have one more question. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> so um, I was thinking, what do you think about like voiceovers over the B-roll and stuff like that, instead of just like sitting and having kind of like an interview shot or something okay. like that? If you want to do that, if you want, if that's what you want to send through, which is like, um, you know, having B-roll over, you know, making a little film of yourself. That's great. It's actually a really effective way to tell your story. And, I, and, and you have the time and you want to make those films that way. And, and it's really easy. You can just use iMovie. You know, there are, you know, I, I, there are a lot of very complicated editing softwares, but there are a lot of really easy ones to use. Um, so if you have the patience and time to do it that way, I totally think it's a good way to tell your story because if you're talking about, you know, a project that you're working on and then you see an image or you see some video of that project, you know, it's so much better. But I will say one thing, I wouldn't only do B-roll. Just like a combination of both. You know, in most documentary, right? You'll see B-roll and then you'll see the mm -hmm. person talking and then some more B-roll and the person talking. I would find, yeah. a flow, right? I would find a flow because I think that is definitely the most um, effective way to tell that. Perfect. And just one more thing. Um, you mentioned about like the archival B-roll. Do you think that I should be looking for archival footage of things that relate to my things that I didn't necessarily film or? Um, maybe if, if you, if you, you know, if you have family that had something um, or there's something older, it, it, it makes sense if, you, if it, that's, you know, when you're talking about, you know, just yeah. you're talking about, you know, why you start, and, 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 and tell me again, what, what's your, what do you do? Sorry. You um, I'm focusing on sustainable textile practices and a lot of has to do with like ancestry of um, working with natural pigments and stuff like that too. So Very nice. I That's think cool. that, yeah. Really. Um, but if you were, just say you were talking about, you know, your practice and, you know, you're talking about where that passion came from and it's some small story about when you were a kid or, something like that, and you had images from that, that's great, mm -hmm. that's awesome. So definitely, if it fits in the story, it's a really beautiful way to um, engage the audience in, in your past. Mm -hmm. um, because the more they kind of know about the source of your creativity, the source of you know the thing that you're doing, kind of the more into it they might be. Um, so I'm always a big fan of that. Mm -hmm. 
would it be okay if things were like in Spanish and then I could just add the subtitles and translate that or yeah. have like in interviews in Spanish? You know, I don't, I don't want to um, speak. I don't, yes, I think that's fine. I think that's great actually, because it's, you know, who you are and you speak Spanish in a lot of your daily life. Uh, um, is that okay? Uh, people from the Swarovski Foundation, is that, is that something that would be all right? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's as long as it's not too complicated that it, you know, um, it takes away the focus, I think it's perfect. Yeah. And yeah, 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 I mean, it's, after all, it's an it's a overall collective video. So um, if it feels a bit out of the place, I mean, it's, it's up to you, Camila, and I'll also leave the creative direction part to Sharky, you. I think it's great. Okay. I love when people speak in their, their native tongue. Um, it's never that distracting. Um, just as long as there's, it's distracting when you don't know what you're saying. Like, you know, there's no subtitles and it's a little tough, but. You know, yeah. Medicine. yeah, go for it. It's a really good way to tell your story. Thank you. Of course. Um, anyone else? Yes. And just tell, tell me your name. I'm sorry. Um, Sejal. Sejal. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for that presentation. That was really, really insightful. And I just had a few questions. Of so, um, I haven't been to like my, you know, so I'm doing mechanical engineering. I'm a mechanical engineering student. I'm in my final year currently, but because of the pandemic, um, I haven't been to university. So most of the work that I'm doing, uh, like especially for the Swarovski Foundation, it's a combination of two things. One is creativity, where I teach dance to the underprivileged. And uh, two is product development and design, one dealing with menstruation in space and the other with a rainwater harvesting project. Uh, the thing is, most of the classes that I do take, which would have been in person, are now online. So it's usually on Zoom or on Meet. And uh, the project design as well, it's it's mostly I have like images and pictures that, you know, I'm doing something or I'm designing it online. But what is probably the best way to record all of that, since I'm not doing it in person, probably at a lab yeah. or yeah, teaching yeah. them physically. Yeah, that's a great question. And I was actually expecting it. And thank you for bringing that up. Um, so in terms of the, um, well, first of all, do you have any older footage of you teaching? Mm, yeah, I think so, but I'll have to look. Well, so that would be an, one option. Um, but another option is, you know, are, I'm guessing you're using Zoom or something. Or, 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 yeah, yeah. You can, you know, you can record on Zoom, record one of your classes. Um, mm, yeah. And that image, right, the gallery view of you teaching. Now, maybe you just, before you do that recording, make sure you ask all of your students to turn on their camera so they can you can see them. Um, mm -hmm. because, you know, seeing just the gray square with the name is is kind of kind of sucks. Um, but uh, if you can see everyone's faces and you teaching, that's awesome. That's great, and it's reflective of the time. You know, it's not any less exciting. It's just it's true. Um, so that's question one. Question two, um, in terms of so, if I got correctly, you're doing most of your work on the computer, right? Either just yes. all your product design. Yeah, okay. Um, so here's some suggestions I would have. You know, get a shot of you at the computer doing some design. You know, have a friend just get a B-roll shot of you working at the computer, mm -hmm. and then do another one around the, you know, over the shoulder, right? And where you kind of see the back of your head, and um, and and then the footage is of the screen, right? And, of you moving the mouse and you manipulating the design, right? And then a last thing is you could print out stuff too. You can, if you can print it out, right? Lay it out on the table nicely and kind of take the camera, kind of float around with it. That's, that's a really beautiful way to, to, to show designs. And that's how I've, you know, when I've done documentaries with, with designers, it's one, you know, we'll have them spread out designs and kind of like a, a beautiful, but like almost chaotic way. Well, do it in any way is expresses a expressive, of you, um, but have them spread out their designs and, and kind of go over stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that's another way to do it. And then if you, do you have any, any of the products you've designed, do you, do you have any um, physical renderings yet? Is there, 
um, mm, nothing physical as of now i mean it's an entire system so probably something that needs to be put up uh, outdoors so okay. yeah i mean if you have any 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 of the parts or whatever you know but again mm. be just you doing what you do yeah and it's always interesting so don't don't mm. worry about it being you know that you're not it's not as like tactile right um mm. it's uh just you know you designing is great you know do you do you use a stylus or do you use a... um so i usually do it using a mouse and i do it like on solid works or so otherwise mm. it's also mostly just drawings and paintings so that's maybe I'll... So you're doing drawings and paintings that's awesome that's yeah. that's it that's awesome like footage of your paintings and drawings and doing that you're uh you're going to have great stuff you'll have great content yeah uh just one last thing the images for like the zoom classes so most of my classes are recorded but mm. would you prefer just that raw data or would you want me to kind of edit it out to the parts i want or so like uh i've been collecting all of them yeah, on a drive so. i think you know again um when you present so you'll be sending so what's going to happen here guys is um you hey we're at one o'clock can i go over a little bit do you guys have time if you don't and is that okay on on swarovski here yeah sure sure okay great um yeah we can say perhaps five to ten minutes yeah great. yeah great um, thank you so what's going to happen is you guys will submit these presentations um, and then our editors here um, will kind of, well, we're doing three films, right? We're going to be doing a teaser film, um, which really won't have uh, any of the video. If you send us some stuff early, we might be able to incorporate it, but it probably won't incorporate any of this stuff um, that we're talking about. But um, so we'll have a teaser film that kind of hypes up the program, gets people engaged and involved and all that. Um, and then you guys will be making your own presentation films, right? Your two minute presentations about your practice, about how you're using your grant, um, about how it's going, right? And you'll submit those to us. And then we're gonna stitch them together to make like a 25 minute film. And that will be shown at, um, will be shown at the UN General Assembly, which is so cool, by the way. <laughs> um, and um, uh, fun fact, I once voiceover a film for the UN General Assembly, um, but that's just a little, little fact about me. Um, anyway, um, so that is really gonna be quite simple. Um, we're just going to, you guys are going to submit and we're going to stitch it together, right? Um, so we would love you guys to have it as ready as possible for us um, in terms of the inclusion of B-roll on top of voiceover if you want to. Now, if you're having a hard time and, and it's hard for you to figure that out, which I totally understand, just let us know and we'll try to work with you to make it happen. Um, but you guys will submit those films to us and we will then put them, we will string them together and we'll, int we'll figure out. So one way we're gonna figure, uh, we're going to introduce you all in this teaser film is we're gonna create these little cards um, with your name and what you do. And like, a, it's all gonna be, um, it's all gonna be reflective of who you are as, as, as practitioners. Um, and we'll probably use those in between each film, right? Um, as well as the teaser film. And then the last film is the wrap film, which we will take snippets from all these presentations and kind of make a, a two minute film, kind of a condensed version. Um, so, but again, to answer your question, um, sorry, that was a long winded way of answering it is yes. Uh, if you can cut it up and you can edit it your own way, um, that is, so it's going to be better. Yeah. But when you do, we, one thing I will ask though, is that you do also share with us all of the raw footage. Okay, yeah. Right, so we want your final presentation, right? And then all the raw footage too, because we'll probably use that raw footage in the rap film. Okay, will do. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Anyone else? Uh, when do you need this by? Do you have a date? That is, a, that is unfortunately not a me question. I don't know. 
I will um, figure that out. You can ask the people, the fine people at the Swarovski Foundation, they will get you all of that logistical stuff. Um, when it comes to that, I'm not the best, so. Thank you. Ben, where are you in the States? I'm currently in Savannah, Georgia. Very nice. It must yeah. be really hot down there. It is very hot. Yeah, it's like 100 degrees. So. And the AC is off in my studio that I'm working in right now. So it's, it's been very hot today. Whoa. Okay. Well, good luck. <laughs> um, anyone else? I, uh, what's your name? Anis, Anastasia? Is that, sorry. Did you have a question? Anushka. Yeah. Anushka, uh, so I have a little question about the uh, data. So if we're like using a footage uh, with another people, should we ask for their like official consent or something? Because I, I already sent a few uh, videos uh, from the backstage of the uh, set for my uh, trailer for my game. And there are people who sh shot the game, so, who shot the trailer. So I'm just thinking, can I use it if on the video there are other people that uh, are they are you seeing their faces or they helped record it? No, you can actually see their faces. So no, I just ask permission. Um, okay. I think that should be fine. I, I don't know if we need to get releases for this. Uh, I don't think we would, but I think it should be fine. As long as they're, you know, you always want to get consent, but okay. Be fine. Um, and you've shared the, that the, the content that you're referring to. Have you shared it before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already sent it. Uh, but no, have you shared it to uh, out in the world before? No, 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 no. I, I just sent it to Swarovski Foundation. Understand. Okay. Um, yeah, just just ask those people and make sure. Um, uh, make sure it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, any anyone else? before we go. Um, cool. Well, this was really uh, lovely. I really hope I didn't bore you guys too much. Um, and uh, again, if you have any questions moving forward, um, Mika can give you, we'll, we'll, we'll get you my contact information. I'm happy to answer any questions, um, concerns and the like. And if anyone is ever in New York City, uh, come by the convicts office, we'd love to, to have any of you. Um, so love to meet you guys. Great. Thank you so much, Sharky, for amazing presentation. That was really learning. There was so much to learn from. Um, if you guys don't have any questions, we can wrap up the session. All right. Great. Thank you, Sharky. We'll be in touch again, cohorts, um, on the timeline and everything. Until right. then. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank, Thank you, Sharky. Bye. Bye. -bye.